2030, Apple will be 100% carbon neutral. More than 400 of the world's 2,000 largest publicly owned companies have set some kind of net zero target. We're committed to reaching net zero emissions. But beyond the PR, it's hard to know exactly what they're doing to achieve it. Something the new annual Corporate Climate Responsibility Monitor is hoping to change. The 2022 report has done a deep dive on 25 big and well-known companies to reveal how much weight is backing up their words. It's really important to give an independent report card. You can't always rely on the claim that, say, vested interests or corporations are making. You need someone independent actually scrutinising the claims and the climate targets that the private sector is making. The companies were scored for the transparency and integrity of their actions to achieve their climate pledges. None achieved a high integrity rating, and only Apple, Vodafone, Sony and shipping giant Maersk were awarded reasonable or moderate integrity. Of the remaining 21 companies, 10, including IKEA, Amazon, Google, and mega pharmaceutical GlaxoSmithKline, scored low integrity, leaving 11 with a very low integrity rating. Among them, BMW and global brand giant Unilever. These are big companies that this report covers. These aren't new companies. They've had a long time to get this right. They've got enormous resources behind them. They should be able to adequately account for all their the report accusing these companies of so-called greenwashing. Greenwashing is putting a nice green or environmentally friendly veneer over the claims that your business is making so they actually seem more environmentally friendly than they are. But not everyone agrees that this style name and shame report is useful. It's clear that the, uh, the companies that have been reported have transparently reported both their ambition and they're identifying what their actions are. The big challenge around what this report highlights, though, is that there is no universal reporting mechanism in relation to private sector action on climate change. In fact, the first globally recognised set of science-based tools to set, track and report corporate net zero progress only launched three months ago. This report shows that the need to spur action on the universal reporting of climate change in corporate action is absolutely critical. So should consumers be avoiding these low-rated companies or giving them props for making a start? Are we at the point where we need to be avoiding? I feel like it's too soon. <laughs> I can't work out, like, the yeah. measurement's not in place. They've yeah. committed to it. I'm not saying... I, I appreciate that there are corporations out there that want to say, look at what a great job we're doing and they're not necessarily doing anything. Yeah, yeah. But these things can't change in... A second. No. The bit that I thought was interesting in that report, though, was the bit about transparency. Mm. So that's not necessarily saying they're doing nothing. It's saying, well, we can't... Can't tell. They're not being open about it, not being clear. I think that's probably something that is worth... Yes. Having, having an eye on. Yeah. Um, we reached out to some of the companies just mentioned for their response to this report. You can read the statements of those that replied on our website. The bottom 20% uh, uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. It's no coincidence that we have a wages crisis in Australia. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas. 